Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jodie Lee. And today is Lesson 13, Wednesday. Okay, so we're going to start today's lesson by reading 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. Okay, so the, the end part of that verse is a bit confusing, I think at first, where it says, we convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. So we know that Jesus died for all of us, but then it's like all of us have died, which sounds a bit weird. But what we understand from that is sin is death. Remember last week, I think it was that Romans verse, the wages of sin is death, right? So we should have died for our sins, but Jesus went and died for all of us. So it's mm. as good as us having died for our own sins, but we don't have to die anymore because he did it for us, right? Christ paid the price for us. Exactly, which is really exciting. So the first quite um, exciting part of this lesson is where it talks about how love compels us. Okay, that kind of summarizes what um, Christianity is. Okay, because what did Jesus give up when he came to earth? Brandon? He gave up good things. Okay, yeah, he gave up heaven, right? Yeah. He didn't give up like, I don't know, he didn't stop mm. like doing things. He gave up heaven. He gave a good thing to be for us, right? Correct. It's not like um, sometimes in life we have to give up bad things. We have to give up hanging around with the wrong crowd. Mm. We have to give up smoking in order to live a healthier life. But Christ didn't give up negative things in order to come to earth. No, he gave up time with the Father. He gave up paradise. He gave up heaven. He gave up literally the most perfect environment. He gave up being a king mm -hmm. to come to earth to be born in a manger, to be spat on and be crucified. Yeah, and why else would he do that? Well, because he loved us, right? For God to love the world. Okay, I'm just quoting cool verses now, okay? But they're beautiful. Okay, so basically what that reminds us is often we think Christianity is like a checklist, like don't do this, like we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't do that. And like, yes, if you're hanging around with a bad crowd, it's probably a good idea to like not hang out with them mm. anymore, right? But Christianity is more about um, letting love compel you to do good things. Amen. God gave up heaven so he could come down and die for us because he loved us so much. And what he's calling us to do is let that love that he has for us and the love that we grow for him compel us to go and do good things and share love and worry less about checking all the things that we shouldn't be allowed to do, right? Correct. So that to me was a really cool takeaway. In the New Testament, when Jesus arrives, we see... Um, the Pharisees, mm. they're, they're very much fixated on not making any mistakes, not making any errors. And in doing that, they won't touch the man on the side of the road. They won't help someone in need. They won't do mm. anything out of fear of making themselves unclean. It's all about not doing the wrong thing. Mm. Whereas Jesus never thought about uh, which commandment he's breaking or what he's doing that's wrong. And he never did break a commandment, mm. but instead his focus was always on how can I help? How can I save? How can I protect? Let Christianity not be a restrictive religion, but a religion of freedom, but of doing things that are good for others. Exactly. And um, this, the lesson gives us a great story about Peter. And your challenge for this week is to go read John 21, verse 15 to 19. We're not going to read it here together, but um, it's beautiful. And basically, Peter messed up. If you, if you haven't, um, if you don't know about that part, go check out that story. We'll put the verses below. But basically what happened is Peter denied Christ three times. Okay. And here Jesus meets him on the shore and he gives him kind of an op opportunity to like remind him that he loves him and he cares and it's okay, you know. Um, and basically three times Jesus asks him, Peter, do you love me? Okay. But that word love he, me he uses isn't the word love. It's the word agape, which means unconditional love. Do you love me unconditionally? But what Peter says is, yes, Lord, I phileo you, which means friendship love. Um, and every time Peter responds with that, Jesus says, go feed my lambs, go take care of my sheep, go feed my sheep. Okay. Um, and so basically what I got from that is Jesus loved him unconditionally. And Peter couldn't offer that back. He couldn't love him unconditionally. He'd realized that he was a faulty human being that messes up. Okay. But Jesus isn't like, ah, oh, you don't love me enough. Go on your way. No, he says, it's fine. Use that love and let that love compel you to go and feed, feed spiritually, go and feed the poor physically or feed them spiritually um, and go and take care of my people and spread my love. And that to me was like a challenge. Like even though maybe I've messed up, maybe I'm not perfect and I don't love him perfectly, Jesus still wants to invite me to um, yeah, go and look after his people. Okay. Awesome. That's all I have. Um, shall we close quickly? We certainly can. You want to pray, Brandon? Yes. Heavenly Father God, 
Lord, we pray that you may uh, take our minds to heavenly places where may, we may have our eyes open constantly to the needs of others around us. May we be able to not just walk over those in need, Lord, but to be able to uh, meet them where they are, to attend to the physical things that they might be struggling with, Lord, and also the spiritual, Lord. If we come across someone who could do with our help, let us not turn and walk the other way, but to meet that person, show them the love of Christ, and try to be a friend. Help us, Father God, to change for the better. Amen. Amen.